This is Josh Beiser from GameWisdom.com. Hope you enjoy this critical thought, your daily discussion on game design. And be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and you can pitch future critical thought topics. Alright everybody, before we get started with today's critical thought, got a question for some of my more tech-savvy or hardware-savvy fans. I bought a new wireless mouse the other day, and while it's okay, it seems that the pointer has a mind of its own. It seems to be like jittering around. I think it could be just the nature of the wireless or whatever. But do you guys have any recommend recommendations for a good gaming mouse on the cheaper side? I don't want to spend like $70, $80 if need be. I was looking at a G203, I think it is, the Logitech newer one. Does anyone have any experience with that or can recommend a good one for me? But with that said, let's get today's critical thought. As I talked about on Thursday, this is going to be a look back at a very weird game that I'm sure most of you haven't played. So, I asked, I gave you the little quiz on Thursday to see if anyone could guess it, and I don't think anyone did. So, here is the game. This is Immersionary. Let me get my hand there. For the 3DO. Yes, I actually own a 3DO here. And what this was, essentially is the precursor to a lot of first of MMO, PvP, and even roguelike design. And I know it's very weird about that. Let's see if we can get that to stay. So Mercenary was developed during the sort of the first height of VR. This was during the mid-90s and the game, like I said, it's a very unusual game in terms of its design why I wanted to talk about it tonight. The story, and you're going to love this, in the future, of course this is 90s in the future, VR has taken over and everyone is basically hooked on a video game that of course if you die in the game you die in real life. So, and follow me on this one, one of the people decide to travel back in time using VR to convince people to help by sending people into the future into the future of virtual reality, mind you, to help save the world. I know, it, it makes perfect sense. But what the game did in terms of its design was really quite different. And again, it's something we even don't see to this day. The Mercenary is a first-person shooter with roguelike elements. You basically get beamed into the game, and then you have 249 unique enemies that you have to kill. It's basically like a ranking system. And then inside that ranking, there are, I think, 10 specific boss characters. And you're going to love this one as well. That, my friends, is what we like to call uh, FMV live acting from the 90s. It looks pretty much like a sci-fi channel, doesn't it? <laughs> like one of like, the uh, recent sci-fi movies there. But the idea is, whenever you kill an enemy, you basically absorb their stats. And you have three... Um, attributes. Strength, which determines your ammo, you have agility for running, and then you have health or defense. I think it's RDA, if I remember. I, I, I don't remember the exact names of it. But the higher the rank of the enemy, or I'm sorry, the lower the rank, it goes you start at 250 and you work your way up, you get higher stats or you get more, uh, more value from killing these enemies. And then there's the garbage tier, which is like rank 251 or something like that, which is basically just free experience. It's like little amounts. And let me see if I can show it here. Oh, if you look very carefully, you can see another one of the bosses right there. And the idea of the game is you basically go into this virtual reality world and you have to level yourself up by killing these enemies. Another thing that's very interesting is that Mercenary came out during that awkward period for first-person shooters off the PC. This was long before the invention of the analog sticks, which meant that you didn't have true, uh, f complete mobility or complete usability for moving your character. So you had to use just a D-pad. So there's very little aiming up and down. It's, and, of course, strafing was a colossal pain. I think it was almost impossible to do in that game. And the roguelike elements came in by, if you run out of health, you get booted back into reality, or past reality, and you get a loss, or a percentage of your stats are cut. 
and if you die too many times, your character essentially has a heart attack and you lose the game. But it, again, this was mid 90s, so we're not talking about some of the more elegant and elevated takes of roguelike design, like we see today with The Buying of Isaac and Soulsborne. And for its time, I mean, it did predate this kind of roguelike elements that we see today in game design. And as a very interesting aside, it also predated MMOs by the fact that you're basically stuck in this world with 249 other unique characters. So the game predicted MMOs, PvP, and roguelikes. And I don't know about you, but maybe it will predate uh, virtual reality um, animations or trends like that. Maybe we'll all look like that in a few years when if the Oculus Rift takes off or all the virtual reality. But the game, of course, wasn't perfect. And in terms of its design, it definitely kind of like, I'm not sure how to explain this, but it kind of felt like the design decisions sort of ran out. Like they had a good idea for something and then they never, it didn't really completely follow through. The first one is the fact that there, inside the game, there's a central location, which is a safe zone. And in that safe zone, you can literally talk to the various characters, including those very weird NPCs who are supposed to be like actors playing them. And during like there's storms, and when there's a lightning storm or whatever in the game, all the bosses and all the buildings basically stop working. It's supposed to be like a glitch in the system. So all the bosses hang out in the central area, and it's just hilarious as you get to talk to these people acting like these characters, and they give you like hints and tips for the other bosses, because everyone hates each other essentially. Which could also be part of what we see in some MMOs and PvP games today. But it's kind of like weird about that kind of design. And then the progression model is kind of forced. As I said, the goal is to rank up to number two, which essentially puts you in the running to fight the perfect one, which is the AI that rules. So at specific points in your ranking up, you will not be able to progress higher until you beat one of the ten masters. And the masters are, of course, the live actors, such as this lovely guy. And the weird thing is the first boss, I think her name was Medusa or something like that, to kill her, she is by default immune to your basic weapon. But she's the only boss that I can remember that has immunity towards a weapon. And the only way to beat her is you have to find the upgrade, which I think was hidden in one of the parts of the map. The map itself is not procedurally generated, it is a set map each time. But you have the characters running around, you know, anywhere kind of thing. And it was kind of weird by the fact that this was the only boss with this kind of lock. So if you can beat her and you find that weapon, you basically can spend the entire game literally farming the central area where you just run in and you get free health. And so it was just so easy to break the game. Speaking of, the game doesn't use um, temp saves or quick saves and loads you know, when you die like we see in Soulsborne. So even if you die, as long as you have a save from like a little bit ago, you can just, you know, turn the game off, turn it back on, you have your save preserved. So I could pretty much beat the game in like an hour, or maybe an hour and a half, and have no penalties and no fear of death. It's kind of like that kind of system. And the bosses themselves, even though there are 10 different enemies, you basically beat them all by just mashing the attack button with your strongest weapon. But... As I said, Mercenary really was unique for its time. The idea of having these roguelike elements, and even like when we think about it, this was the precursor to kind of like this kind of ARPG or a first person ARPG. Because you're gaining experience by killing the enemies and then absorbing their essence. And that is abstracted design in a sense. And this came out, if I check the copyright date. 1995. So I believe by this point, Diablo 1 was released. Let me just check that myself. Because Diablo 2 came out at the end of the 90s. No, it came out in 96. So this game actually um, beat Diablo to the punch in terms of that kind of ARPG design. And it certainly beat the idea of a first person shooter 
with RPG elements, stuff like Hellgate London and Borderlands. And again, it kind of occupies that very weird niche in time. Coming out during the heyday of VR, but the precursor to the first person shooter era, and of course on the 3DO, and like I said, I'm very certain that for most of you watching this video right now, you probably didn't play that game. And I don't think it came out anywhere else in terms of its design. Like, I don't think it came out on the PC. Let me see. No, it was only for the 3DO. So, lucky me, I get to play it. I would love to show you the game, but I don't even know where to begin in terms of setting up something for that. And as a really funny aside, for those of you who are on GOG and like to pitch games for them, I don't know if it's possible, but I would love for them to get Sewer Shark, the old FMV style game on there, because if they ever do, we need to have like a bad FMV movie night on the Twitch channel, almost like MST3K-esque. But that is another topic in of itself. There's not really a summary here for today's critical thought. Again, we we're kind of talking about a game that's pretty much before our time. But again, it's kind of interesting how some of these older designs, and you can see this was like a little lore book that came in with the various characters, bosses, personality traits, stuff like that. And you can see what <laughs> people had to actually dress up like this. Although the guy on the left there, those two, probably just need to use CGI. I don't think anyone actually looks like that for real. But yeah, this was what we were looking for VR characters back then. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit more. But again, it's always interesting to look at these older games and see what we can learn in terms of its design. And for something like a mercenary, it did kind of predict these elements of RPG, roguelike, and even first-person shooter design. And for those of you watching this, do you know any other games like a Mercenary over there? And did you really enjoy that kind of 90s fashion? Who knows, maybe in 10 years from now, that will be what we will all be playing. <laughs> that will be Farmville 3, folks. That's what Zinka's working on next. But let's end things here. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's critical thought, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to once again dig through my catalog of games and see if I can find any other interesting titles worth talking about. One that I'm thinking about is Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. I think that would make another interesting talk. But as always, if you have any suggestions for critical thoughts, be sure to leave them below. And of course, check back daily for more great content here and on GameWisdom.com where we examine the art and science of games. Be sure to check back. I've decided that for scheduling purposes, I'm going to try and do a dissecting design once a week and probably on Mondays. And I've updated my little um, schedule that you see in the notes below with that information. I got a pretty good one for Monday. If you missed the Twitter announcement, it's going to be on a game that didn't do so well. And that's going to be very fascinating to talk about. But until then, I'm still Josh Beiser. Have a great night. And like I said, if you have any suggestions for those gaming mice or wire mouse like that, please let me know. And I'll talk to you tomorrow with another critical thought. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, share with your friends. It always helps out. For daily posts on all manner of game design and industry topics, check out game-wisdom.com. To support the site and everything that I do, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. If we can hit goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, and I'll be able to support myself and my household. If you want to follow me, you can find me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day and random thoughts from me. And lastly, you can find me on Twitch right over there at GW Bicer for daily streams most nights around 10 Eastern. Thanks again for watching the video, and be sure to check out more great content coming to the Game Wisdom channel real soon.